Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to our sixth video about Aero Study 1 in Unit 3, Microeconomics. You must be pumped, it's been totally not the sixth video that I'm doing in one day because I don't have any year 11 or 12 classes, and I'd rather do this in some admin than I need to do, like writing reports, etc. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about elasticity of supply and demand, which is all about the responsiveness of a changing price to a changing quantity supplied or demanded. Um, this is obviously following on from my talk about equilibriums, um, supply and demand, as well as changes in those um, factors. So hopefully you've got those under control, you understand them well. If not, you should be shooting me questions and I'll help you out. Um, but this is where stuff gets a little bit more complicated. I almost swore then, my bad, um, unless you're into that, in which case we'll see how we go. But let's get into our key knowledge, key skills for this little bit of the area of study. So what we're gonna be looking at is factors affecting price elasticity of demand, degree of necessity, availability of substitutes, proportion of income and time, as well as factors affecting elasticity of supply, so spare capacity, production period, and durability of goods. So let's talk about these. Um, this is the things we're gonna look at. Then we've only got two more things to go through in this topic and you are ready for a sack in 2021, which is kind of scary, but elasticity. So despite the nice clean 45 degree line we tend to look at for supply and demand, so these, um, this isn't always the case, it's actually rarely the case. Like, you know, we call that unit elasticity, not too common. Um, and we'll get into the factors of why that's the case in a moment. But in some cases, price can change and the impact on supply or demand can be to a much greater or lesser degree. And we refer to this as elasticity, which is the responsiveness of quantity supplied or demanded to a change in price. So you need to know that. Like, you need to be able to um, define that, describe that. Um, in a test or exam situation. So the responsiveness of quantity supplied or demanded to a change in price, that is what elasticity is. So the degree to which it changes. So we're gonna look at demand first, and then we're gonna get into supply after that. So there are three types of elasticity we refer to, although realistically in questions, you're only really gonna get two of them. You're gonna talk about elastic or inelastic. So, Elastic demand is where a change in price will lead to a larger change in quantity demand. And we've got it set up over here at the top. So if we were to set this up, let's go with a bold color like red. If we have two different prices, so P1, we'll look at and quantity demanded is about here. And then if we set P2 down here, you can see there's a gigantic change in quantity demanded despite only a small change in price. Call that elastic demand when a small change in price leads to a much larger um, increase in quantity demanded. Or when there is a increase in price, it leads to a massive decrease in quantity demanded. So our example here is if price decreases by 10%, quantity demanded increases by 20%. Then we've got unit elastic demand, which is where the proportion of a change in price is equal to the quantity demand. So that's our 45 degree line over here. Um, for example, price decreases by 10%, Quantity demanded increases by 10%. So if the price goes down from $10 to $9, quantity demanded goes up to 110 from 100. Just 10 changes. Um, back to elastic demand. When we talk about this, when we get into the factors that affect elasticity and elastic demand, this tends to be more for things um, that are luxuries to generalize it a lot. We'll get into the specifics in a moment, but um, this will help you make more sense of it. So when things are a luxury, they tend to be more elastic because you don't need to buy it. Therefore, a change in price affects your decision-making a lot more. So, for example, um, if there is something that you, is a tree. So, uh, if, for the example, I used a couple things ago about muffins being on special, and like muffins at full price for $3. So if you get like a muffin break and a muffin's like $5, it's like, who's paying $5 for a muffin? A muffin is a treat, but that is bloody expensive for a muffin. If they're a dollar, or say they go down a little bit, it's a treat, like you're gonna start demanding more because it's cheaper and it's a luxury. You're willing to treat yourself more if it goes down in price. Then when we get to the last type of elasticity, there's inelastic demand, which is where a change in price will lead to a smaller change in quantity demand. So let's just say, um, for argument's sake over here, we'll have P1 and P2, which is up higher because we're talking about a price increase. And this is gonna get very sketchy down the bottom. If we've got Q1 and Q2, 
you can hopefully see down the bottom down here right next to my face there's not a very big change in quantity compared to the change in price you can see the change in price the gap there is bigger than the gap in there and that's for things that are inelastic so this tends to be for necessities um, things you're addicted to if for example if price if the price of petrol goes up 10 percent i'm still buying it because i need it to get my car to work if i don't rock up to work i'll get in trouble Therefore, if price increases by a lot for petrol, I'm still, it's not going to affect my quantity demand. I might try and delay it for a little bit, but I'm still going to end up having to buy it. So these are the elasticities of demand. So some of the factors that affect whether they're going to be elastic, unilastic, or inelastic are the following. So first up, we've got the degree of necessity. When things are necessities, so for example, water, electricity, internet, um, they're inelastic. And luxuries tend to be more elastic. Luxuries tend to be more elastic because you don't need it right now. It's just a treat. Um, some of the time we talk about this, like um, if you are a diabetic uh, and the price of insulin goes up, you're going to buy that because you need that to live. Whereas um, if you are not diabetic and the price of lollies changes, well, it's a luxury. It's um, the changing price is probably going to affect you a lot because you're just like, well, I'm going to buy that now. It's a treat. So luxuries are more elastic and necessities are inelastic. The availability of substitutes, when there are no substitutes for an item, it tends to be inelastic. So for example, like um, people pay insane prices for an iPhone 12, despite it costing a lot, it's, like, it's not like $2,000 for an iPhone now. People don't see iPhones as having substitutes. So look at this, like, this weird rectangle that is probably gonna smash at some point. This is not an iPhone 12, this is like an iPhone 8 because I'm living in the past. But um, people see these and they're just like, well, this is a phone that no other phone can substitute for for some reason. And so they'll pay whatever price for it because iPhones tend to be inelastic because of that. Whereas when you look at like substitutes, if you look at, um, well, let's say loaves of bread, there's like a million different loaves of bread available and you can just go for whichever one um, is the cheapest. Therefore, it tends to be more elastic. Or if one goes in special, you would just buy that one making it more inelastic or making it more elastic because there are substitutes available. The proportion of your income, goods and services that take a large portion of your income tend to be more elastic as you wait for the price to drop to purchase. Um, an example of this that came up on the 2019 exam was about housing and whether housing was in elastic or inelastic and VCAR tended to lean towards being elastic because it's such a large proportion of your income and therefore if house prices fall, you're more likely to buy a house. Um, whereas goods and services that cost very little, for example, toothpicks tend to be inelastic because even if they increase in price, it won't make a large impact. So like if a toothpick is like a few cents, if it goes up one cent, it's not gonna change your decision making. Like if it goes from five cents to six cents, that's the inelastic, like it's not gonna affect your demand at all because it's so negligible. Then the last factor is time. If you need something now, it's inelastic because you can't wait. And if you can wait for the price to change, it tends to be more elastic. So I like to always look at this as, uh, in terms of flights. Flights are very useful to look at in 2020 when I'm recording this. But with flights, if you need them now, they tend to be inelastic and you'll pay whatever price they cost. So if you want to book a flight short term, it tends to be expensive, but you'll pay whatever price because you want to get to wherever your destination is. Whereas if you can wait, whether if it's for a holiday and you can wait to just book in when you get the best deal, that's going to be more elastic because you can wait to find a better deal. I'm an example of this for me. So like, I was in Queensland for a race once, and my flight got cancelled, and I really wanted to get home, um, see my wife and daughter, and my flight getting cancelled meant that I wouldn't be able to get a flight till the next day, and I kind of weighed up like getting a flight now versus waiting till the next day. Well, I would have needed accommodation. Those costs would have added up. I could just pay extra for a flight now, um, which made it more inelastic, but it meant I got home sooner. So because I needed it now, it was inelastic. Now we're gonna look at supply. So supply, once again, the three, but um, elastic, unilastic, and inelastic, but with these being supply lines, they slope upwards. With elastic supply, a small change in price will lead to a larger change in quantity supply. So if price increases by 10%, there will be a much larger increase in quantity supplied. So if you look at that there, Q1, Q2, P1 and P2. As you can see, only a small amount of price increase for a massive increase in quantity supplied. 
Then inelastic, 45 degree line, proportional, 10%, leads to 10%. Inelastic then is that if um, price increases by 10%, quantity supplied might only increase by 5%. If we go P1, if we go P2, you can see that the quantity extra supplied is smaller than the increase in price. So that's saying that. So like, what's going to cause these? So like, um, any supply that's elastic is going to be things where the supply can get more out really quickly, and inelastic can be where they can't respond and supply more very quickly. So you should be thinking about situations where that is the case, but because this is a video, we're just going to go into explaining that. So factors that affect how elastic supply is. So how much spare capacity a business has. So if businesses are not using their resources to their maximum potential or maximum use, then supply tends to be more elastic. It's like if a business is only using 50% of its technology or its production line, and suddenly the selling price goes up, they can suddenly use 100% of their production line to supply more, therefore making supply more elastic. Whereas if businesses are working at capacity, supply is more inelastic because in the short term, they can't produce any more. So if you're working at 100% and the price goes up, you can't work at any more than 100%. Therefore, it's inelastic because even though the price can go up by 20%, you can't supply any more, therefore it's inelastic because you can't respond to that change in price. Then we've got production period. So production period is all about goods and services which take a long time to create. So things like fruit and vegetable, they tend to be more inelastic. So because it takes time to grow them, you can't respond quickly to a change in price. Um, so for example, if bananas go up to $15 per kilo, Although suppliers would want to supply a lot more, they'd have to grow bananas, and that probably takes a long time. I don't know how long bananas take to grow, but it wouldn't be instant. Um, well, goods and services that can be made quickly tend to be more elastic. So things that you can make quite quickly and respond to tend to be more elastic. Then lastly, durability. Goods and services which can be so stored tend to be more elastic as businesses are able to keep stock in storage and respond quickly to increases in price. So I was actually this in canned goods like baked beans, honey, honey lasts forever if it's in storage. These can be more elastic because if the price changes, if businesses have them in stock, they can just push them out to stores and sell them. Therefore, they're responding quickly to a change in price. Whereas perishable goods tend to be inelastic as there's a limited window which they can be sold for. So to go back to the example of bananas, if bananas go up in, like if bananas fall in price, you can't just store bananas and wait for the price to get better they're going to go brown, gross, and go moldy. So therefore, perishable goods tend to be more inelastic as they kind of just need to be sold regardless of the price, otherwise they'll go bad. So businesses kind of just need to, once they get them out to market, accept whatever price they are um, able to get for them. And therefore, they can't respond to changes in price very quickly. And that's essentially it for elasticity. That was a lot in 13 minutes, I'm well aware. So if any of that is unclear, send me a question and I'll help out with that. I'll also um, drop a link for another video where I talk about this in slightly more detail um, in the description below if you want to check that one out. Um, and that, we've only got two more things to talk about in this topic. We've got market failure and government failure, which kind of tie in together. Market failure we're going to take a little while on. I'm going to record that tomorrow so you get to see me in the same one pineapple shirt all the time. And I want to go home. It's like 1.50 and I've been recording videos since 9 a.m. Um, so that's been my life today. Um, and that I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time, probably in 2021 when you're watching this. Have a good one. Goodbye.